Hi, this is Larry Hatch, and I'm the Horticultural Taxonomist with Cultivar.org. And today's topic is all the known cultivars of ZZ plant, the Zamiococca zamii folia, which is easy for me to say, or you to say, or somebody to say. Um, a lot of people think there's probably three or four cultivars. Uh, I did some research with the patent offices and catalogs and vendors and collectors and everything and I found out there's actually 12 of them uh, as of January 2021 and there'll probably be a couple more this year so I'll try to add those at some point. Uh, the first cultivar, and we're doing this in alphabetical order, is one called Chameleon and it's a fairly new one. Uh, the picture here is from the patent application so I only have a black and white image at this point. Uh, the leaves are variegated heavily in yellow, or what they describe as a metachromatic yellow, meaning a changing shades of yellow. Uh, it starts out, as you can see from the picture, bright yellow to medium yellow. Well, you can't see that, but it's, it's kind of a pale shade. And the midrib is a darker color, green, and the tips can be green as well. And it slowly, eventually becomes all green, more of a typical green. So it's what we call virescent, meaning becoming green. It has a gene for the chlorophyll developing more slowly. And when I say it's recent, uh, it has a U.S. patent, plat patent plant patent number of 32253. It was awarded on the 29th of September 2020, not too long ago, to Michael Rimland, R-I-M-L-A-N-D of Miami, Florida, who found it as a spontaneous mutation in 2017 in a nursery in Bangkok, Thailand, and uh, made a stable clone when he propagated it. Um, this appears to be different from the clone that's gold marked or gold sectored that we'll look at a little bit later um, in, in that the growth is all gold uh, when it's new and not mixed in a chimeral manner. Um, anyway, it's very different and uh, I look forward to actually seeing one in real life. It's going to probably be rare for a while. Um, the second cultivar is called Dark as a Micro, and uh, it's based on the original cultivar Zam Micro. And if you can kind of put that together, that means Zamio Colchis Micro, meaning smaller. Uh, this particular cultivar is compact, broadly erect, with smaller leaflets, and they are close to pure black. Uh, the U.S. patent is 288-847 on the 2nd of January 2018 to Andrianus Sprut, uh, that's S-P-R-U-I-T of the Netherlands, and it occurred as a branch sport of Zemicro. So this is a compact one, it's black, um, probably similar to, to the Raven Dowen cultivar. So anyway, uh, so we, now we have two black cultivars, and this is the compact, more compact of the two. Uh, the next one is called Edzam Dark One. Um, that is a more compact cultivar with darker green leaflets. Uh, they are more abundant on the leaf, and it roots more easily by leaf cuttings. This was patented in the United States as a plant patent number 30529 on the 21st of May 2019 to Ed Buen, Buen? Uh, it's spelled B-U-I-N-E-N, of uh, Ed's Plants of the Netherlands, and he found it as a whole plant sport in 2012. Um, and uh, he said as a vegetative clone it's, it's more uniform and stable than the species typical, either grown from random vegetative propagation or seed sources. Uh, we also have the name Emerald Palm. That is not a true cultivar. Uh, that is considered a common name or synonym of the typical species. 
and but it is sometimes used uh, to look as if it were a cultivar name, so don't be fooled by that. Emerald palm is considered to be the typical species until we learn otherwise. The next cultivar is the one we were speaking about early. It's a gold variegated sport. It's occurred different places at different times, and I can't be sure they're all um, from the same clonal stock. You know, these kind of uh, sectoral variegations occur in many plant species uh, in many parts of the world over time. So I'm showing a picture of the one that I was given by a collector and this shows that leaves are heavily sectored yellow also striped yellow in sort of narrow linear elliptical patterns and the uh, and the the, uh, the rachis or the stem of the leaves appears to be violet red to purplish um, and they generally command prices of $100 or more when you can find one. Uh, the reason we don't have a name for it is nobody seems to have named it so far. And again, we need to determine is there one or two or three stable clones that are being propagated. And those deserve uh, unique vernacular names. Not Latin, please. Don't call it Aurea variegata. Because any cultivar after... January 1st, 1959, according to the nomenclature codes, has to be a vernacular name, cannot be Latin or Greek. So please don't call it something Latin. Um, the next cultivar is called Hansoti 13. Uh, it's more compact than Semicro, has shorter internodes than it, and it has more leaflets per leaf by one and a half to two times. So the, the leaflets are numerous compactly spaced uh, they are more strong and stiff the petiole and rachis have a distinct apical curvature that is urn shaped and the leaflets are up to six centimeters long and that's compared to uh, about 4.6 centimeters for what the originator calls the typical species their width is 3 centimeters, and that's compared to 1.7 centimeters in Zemicro. Uh, they're darker green than the species, thicker and more glossy. A U.S. plant patent was awarded under number 26760 on the 24th of May, 2016, to Hashish Hansoti, H-A-N-S-O-T-I of India. And... Um, it occurred as a sport of a variegated compact mutation, which was unnamed, that he found near New Mumbai in 2009. Uh, by the way, you can look up any of these U.S. patents, uh, either on the U.S. patent website, which is uspto.gov, or on Google Patents. Um, if you just type in patent and Zemiococcus, you'll probably get some other websites as well that have this information. Our next cultivar is called Hemzemio, H-E-E-M-Z-A-M-I-O. It has good basal clumping and density. Oh, that's supposedly a difference. Uh, it's, up, it's got uprightly pointed leaflets. They're not as uh, round or obtuse as Lucky, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, these have a dark grade green to purplish color, appearing black from a distance. Uh, the rachis is dark grade green, medium green. Uh, lucky is medium green, so the rachis is a dark grade green shade. And it was awarded a U.S. patent number 26262 on the 22nd of December 2015 to Harold Heemskirk, H-E-E-M-S-K-E-R-K, -E -E of the Netherlands, and it occurred as a branch sport of the species in 2012. So now we have three blackish ones. We have the dark uh, semicro, we have the popular raven known as Darwin, and now we have the Heemzamio. Our next cultivar is one called Lucky, and um, 
that has a fairly distinctive characteristic. It has a very rounded leaflet, or as we say as taxonomous, obtuse, or as a typical leaflet would be uh, more mucronate to acute. Uh, these leaflets are slightly concave towards the apex in the new growth, but they're more flat at maturity. It was awarded U.S. Patent 23594 on the 14th of May 2013 to Edward Brunin again, B-R-U-I-N-E-N of the Netherlands, and he found it as a whole plant mutation in 2003. The habit is also shorter and more compact, and I show an image of it. Uh, I think those of you who are very familiar with the species will recognize that that leaf apex as being much more rounded than typical and I, I think the leaves are maybe a lighter green as well the patent application doesn't say that but anyway um, then our next cultivar is called Lucky Wit and I think that's W-H-I-T um, in reference to white um, but I'm not sure uh, anyway uh, Lucky Wit is blotched and marbled in yellowish green which is uh, RHS color chart values 151C and 151D. The margins are curled and the midrib is distinctly dark green un unlike any other variegated sports uh, known to the originator. Um, since it's called Lucky Wit, I'm, I'm assuming it's possibly a, um, a sport of Lucky, but it doesn't actually say that. Uh, U.S. Patent number 23614 was awarded on the 21st of May 2013, again to Edward Brunin of the Netherlands, and he found it as a whole plant mutation in 2007. And if you go to um, our website, um, Hatches Interior Plants at cultivar.org, you will find um, that being... Uh, there's, a, there's a link to where his information can be found other than the patent application. And again, I do want to put in a plug now. Uh, I have spent more than 30 years working on a plant encyclopedia to be the most complete for cultivars, that is, garden varieties of interior and tropical and house plants, uh, including uh, more tender bulbs as well. And uh, we had sold this for a number of years as a book, got too big to be a book. Uh, then it was sold as a subscription to libraries uh, for as much as $89 a year. And it was intended to be a supplement to the existing houseplant references, you know, like Exotica, Tropica, and so on. And uh, it's just kind of grown because the number of cultivars have grown. And we decided boy, you know, let's stabilize the nomenclature worldwide, get it out to everybody. Because uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you, people the, in the Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube generation, I don't think they're going to buy a book for $89, even though they probably should to be better informed, I'll be honest with you. I needed to be better informed, which is the reason I wrote it, uh, and get feedback from the readers. So go to Cultivar dot org click on hatches interior plants and it's all there free thousands and thousands of cultivars if you like variegated plants we've got more interior variegated plants than any website at all i promise you um and again it's 30 some years worth of work um so it's not not some kind of half shot compilation um our next cultivar is very famous uh, it's known as Raven, but guess what? Raven is not a cultivar. Raven is a trademark name, and we know this from the patent applications. Uh, its actual cultivar name is Dowan, D-O-W-O-N, and Raven is the trademark name. So if you see somebody using Raven as a cultivar name in single quotes or double quotes, that is incorrect and uh, its legal cultivar name is Dawan and the trademark name is Raven. Um, a clone 
a single clone can have both names. It can have a cultivar name and a trademark name, which is usually a marketing name. And to be accurate, you'd need to refer to the plant as both or one or the other. But again, please don't call or even a cultivar if that matters to you. Um, the leaves are much darker, as we know. They're glossy, blackish, green. Um, sometimes they can be blackish brown. Um, a really interesting color. And um, they are perhaps flatter than typical, although that's up for debate. They are glossy <clears throat> in this this dark blackish green and blackish purple sometimes they look blackish brown almost a dusky charcoal shade below on the underside of the leaf the new growth is sometimes a medium to lime green similar to the species so that color develops over time and you can get plants that are quite bicolored with green tips and black older leaflets that's that occurs only on strong vigorous plants they're actively growing. Um, <clears throat> again, the ra raven is not the patented name. Um, this plant was widely introduced in 2018, uh, in the United States at least, and sometimes um, by Exotic Angel and Costa Farms in the spring of 2020, I think is the trending tropical. Now, a lot of people don't know where it came from. Uh, the United States patent number 30035 was awarded on the 25th of December, Christmas Day, in the year 2018, to a gentleman called Hayek Jin Lee. That's spelled H-Y-U-K, uh, second word J-I-N, third word Lee, L-E-E, -E, of South Korea, as a branch mutation in 2006 at his nursery in Sengok Dong Seoul. So this plant, Raven, Dawan, uh, originated in Seoul, South Korea, as have many fine other interesting plants, by the way. Uh, people think of um, Thailand, the Philippines, Costa Rica, places like that as sources for new uh, exotic plant cultivars, but believe me, Japan and China and Seoul, Korea are still leading sources for uh, rare material. And, uh, and many of you collectors will know that. Our next cultivar is a white variegated sport, which is much different in color than the yellow one we discussed earlier. It generally has a kind of a pristine white to some of the um, sectors and leaflets. Uh, it does not have a name. Again, we don't know if there's more than one clone of this. I was given this picture uh, by a friend and this would be typical of what you'd buy for probably $100 to $300 if you could find one, and I do not have one. <laughs> um, the Chimera uh, is starts with kind of a clear white to a creamy white, two shades of silver and gray as the Periclinal Chimera has different depths over the green. You know, if it's, if it's a thin layer over the green, it's going to be more greenish gray or silver if it's a very deep chimera with many cell layers it's going to be a cleaner white it all has to do with the way the the light reflects off of it and passes through the leaf although in this species it's mostly reflectance rather than translucence um, and then some of the leaflets as you can see here uh, can be all white or all cream uh, even even to one side of the leaf to the exclusion of the other so it's kind of interesting um, I only heard about it uh, last year in 2020 uh, but it's probably been out there a while the next cultivar is called Zemicro which some people have sold as mini um, it's about 16 inches tall so it's shorter than species typical it's compact with shorter inner nodes uh, the leaflets are just 1.7 centimeters wide, and it was given a U.S. plant patent 19314 on the 14th of October 2008, and it was given to Andriana Sprut of the Netherlands as a whole plant mutation he found in 2002. And this was the first patent awarded in the U.S. 
to uh, to anyone in the genus. Is that micro or mini? Uh, the leaflets are mostly flat and straight. They're not recurved or hooked like the Zenzi dwarf form, which has leaflets to three centimeters wide. So it, it tends to be a flat leaflet only about up to uh, 1.7 centimeters wide. And uh, we'll look at Zenzi in just a minute here. Here's a picture of Zenzi. And I think those of you who have seen this, it's also called dwarf. Um, and it's only 12 to 14 inches tall, so much shorter. Uh, it's very compact. The stems appear to be thicker, <coughs> at least for a plant of the same age. And, and I think you can see that if you, those of you who know the species pretty well. Uh, the inner nodes are much reduced, so everything's closely spaced, giving that compact appearance. And these internodes between the leaf bases are about a centimeter long or less. Uh, and that's, that's quite compact. Uh, the leaflets are distinct in that they're shorter, but they're also wider, three centimeters wide in some cases. They're very much thicker, and they're distinctly recurved. And to a taxonomist, recurved means kind of hooked or curving down. And I think you obviously see that from the picture. It's most distinct, the recurving in the apex. In that regard, this looks sometimes like a couple of the cultivars of Ligustrum japonicum, which have a similar leaf color and shape and thickness and so on. Um, and the apex looks more sharp than normal because it's kind of hooked down and it actually stands out among the dark underside of the leaf so you can see it. That's what we call a mucronate or cuspidate point on the leaflet and that's a little more obvious because of the way it's positioned. Uh, a well-grown plant and I think you can see that from this picture maybe what we call disticus that's d-i-s-t-i-c-h-o-u-s or two-ranked meaning that <clears throat> the leaflets are in two series or two ranks that are almost parallel to each other um, you know like like two sets of soldier, two rows of soldiers in formation. And by the way, the common bald cypress is called Taxodium disticum because again, its, its leaflets and segments are in two ranks or two series, uh, many cases that are very distinct. Um, and uh, anyway, um, and then that's 12 cultivars now. Uh, ZZ is sometimes used as a cultivar name and has been cited in um, one patent application as a cultivar, but generally speaking, ZZ is not a distinct cultivar. It's a common name for the species itself and should not be regarded as a cultivar. Um, you know, maybe some of the original clones could be called ZZ as opposed to other clones, but that is not defined either legally, horticulturally, or botanically, uh, so we really shouldn't use that as a cult of our name, more correctly as a common name. And um, it, the, the ZZ appears in the patent application for Zamicro um, as a, as a um, comparison to its dwarfness um, and so on. Um, but anyway, I hope you like this video, and I can do some more. Uh, I've been doing YouTube videos for many years, uh, mostly on woody plants. Um, so if you go to cultivar.org, uh, we will have links to our videos. Uh, you can also look up my videos under Larry Hatch, H-A-T-C-H, on YouTube. And you'll find quite a few, you know, things like red buds, hostas, junipers, uh, conifers, variegated uh, woody plants, weeping woody plants, that kind of thing. So anyway, thanks for watching, and please subscribe and like as you wish to do. And again, please go to um, Hatches Interior Plants. It's You're going to love it. It's, it's a huge database. It's 100% free, no sign-up, no fees, no search, no tracking, no nothing. It's just all free. 
and you'll see some amazing pictures of rare plants descriptions of them from careful research and uh, more than 30 years worth of work so please um, please visit and we're trying to make uh, the the hip or hatches interior plants uh, an international location to stabilize nomenclature um, and we are registering new houseplant cultivars so if you have a new cultivar send us the information and preferably a photo well that's not required and we will register your new house plan and list it in the registry uh, we do not generally register cultivars that are done by other plant societies like the aeroid society or begonia society um, but if they haven't registered them we will give it a shout out and a mention and uh, we are particularly interested in coleus because that is our uh, sister organization in cultivar.org again thank you